Welcome back guys for episode 2 of our UBR series which is the unboxing, building and review of different model kits from various manufacturers. Tonight we are having a look at the British Union Brigade Cavalry from Warlord Games. Uh, these are Napoleonic miniatures uh, and on the front we have 12 multi-part plastic and metal 28mm British cavalry models. So we're going to tear on ahead. Uh, three boxes of these have actually arrived just this week uh, from Warlord uh, as part of our project which we've talked about on a previous video where we are going to build the entire Union and Household Brigades uh, as well as most of the cavalry corps. So guys this is priced at £20 per box uh, directly from Warlord. You can buy three boxes for £55 uh, which is free delivery with that great price. Uh, and also you can pick these up on Goblin Games or Element Games at a reduced price, usually in around anywhere between £16 to £18. So, without any further ado guys, I'm going to tear on in. You can see we have the lovely artwork in the front here actually, um, of the Scots Greys. Uh, and obviously their charge at Waterloo. So, what have we got inside? Okay, so, as is standard with most of the Warlord kits, uh, we have a little bit of a blurb around the British Union Brigade Cavalry uh, and different types of troops you can actually build with this kit. So you can build up the Inniskilling, 6th Inniskillings, the 2nd, which were the Royal Scott Greys, and the 1st Royal Regiment of Dragoons. So you can build all, all three from this kit, which is fantastic. Uh, and then on the reverse we have... A little bit of detail around the actual headdress that would be worn by the Greys, the Dragoons and the Inniskillings. Uh, so you've got the Grecian horse-haired helmet, watering caps also in there, the Scots Grey bearskin. So I'm going to get a look and look at those on the sprue and see how they shape up. So uh, great to see. First thing is these lovely Warlord plastic bases uh, which I actually use quite a lot so you get enough to multi base uh, for your black powder stuff you can put some on single bases I like to put all of mine on singles uh, just so they can be used in other games uh, so I actually buy some of these sprues as an aside but you get one sprue of bases in here guys and then we're straight into the plastic frame so if we have a look uh, each sprue has two horses uh, sort of two part multi fit models uh, there uh, we also have the bodies. Uh, we then have a variety of sword arms, as we can see here, and then our different selection of hats and heads. So we've got the bearskin there, the Scots Grey bearskin. We've also got the oil covered bearskin, which is an option. We have the Grecian helms down here. Uh, and the watering caps there uh, and also up here this looks like some form of Grecian I'm not sure what cap that is perhaps somebody that's watching will know better than me and then we have our usual saber tash so um, the actual sprue guys quite a bit of option on it um, I like the sword arms detached uh, and you can multi pose your models which is great uh, the horses themselves uh, to me are just a little bit big in terms of scale uh, beside the likes of Perry uh, and even the Warlord Metals, uh, they are quite large and clunky. But we're going to jump in and build one shortly and see how it all goes together. So that sprue, guys, we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six. Six of those sprues. So you've got enough on those sprues, guys, to make your full 12 models, which is great. Uh, however, the nice little addition of this box is your metal command so they come with each box if we just have a look in here packed by Becky thanks Becky so in here we have first of all you have your Scots Grey Bugler uh, it comes as a one piece uh, metal cast uh, actually a really nice model uh, I've painted one of these up before it's fantastic the sculpt's good um, doesn't look like there's too much flash or cleaning up to do on the model so that's a real nice wee model for your Scots Grace. 
We then have the Officer, which is again single piece metal with just head options. Uh, so this guy's sort of riding at the charge with his sword arm raised. Again, quite a nice little model, uh, quite well finished. And then the real strength here is these guys themselves. So you do get a spare bugler arm uh, because obviously the only other bugler in the, the set is the Scots Grey guy. So if you're not building Scots Greys, guys, you can build your full command with your bugler uh, because the arm option is there. It just goes onto one of the plastic sprues. And then our choice of helmets. So we have the Grecian helm. So you can use that for your Ennis Skillings or your first regiment of dragoons. And then we've got two Scots Grey uh, heads. Again, one is the oil covered, uh, oil skin covered cap, and the other one's just a straight up bear skin. So again, great little options in that kit for your command. So actual box contents there guys is seems to be quite a lot in the kit. Uh, so I'm actually going to pop ahead my first box of these guys I'm going to make up a Scots Grays. The iconic greys. So I'm just going to go ahead and start work on one of these. So we only have four join points on each horse, which isn't too bad. Easy access on the sprues, no little sort of tricky angles to come in at. So it's a two part fit there. We'll need one of the bodies. Which is great again only three points one bit I, I don't like is the the sprue line on the collar because it can be quite hard to trim and you end up taking a little bit of the collar line away but that's just something small and, and minor uh, first regiment I think I'm going to put in the oil skins so I'm just going to clip the head out it's fantastic we'll need the saber tash for the horse the guys, I think these are multi-fit by the looks of the sprue, so it doesn't really matter which one you cut out, they can be used. And then from there, we're going to have a sword arm, and I think I'll do one of the ones at the charge. So, in terms of an actual build, guys, it's fantastic, because there's only one, two, three, four, five, six pieces um, <clears throat> for each model. And of course, we're going to need our base as well. And then it's clean up time. So just carefully with my blade, I'm going to lift off the uh, the plastic. The plastic is quite soft, guys, um, which is good when you're cleaning up because it, it lets you tidy it up quite easily. But on the, the reverse side of that, you can also be a little heavy handed and take too much of the model, which we don't want. Maybe just under there. There's a wee bit of mould line just on that sort of... Uh, the strapping on the horse, nothing that's not easily fixed with a with a blade. Just in there. And here, okay. You see guys in here there actually is quite a lot of mold line just on the underside. Um I just like to scrape that off. And you can see it even on the back of the model here running right the way down the hind leg. So again, some people aren't too fussed with it. Um, I just like to have it taken off so that come painting time makes life a little easier. So that's the horse done. The rider, two little points under here, which is great because they're heading and out of the road once the model's mounted up. And then this little bit, as I say, guys, is tricky. As you can see, even coming off the sprue, it's actually nicked the collar a little bit. So you just have to be careful to try and tidy that uh, and tidy it up a little bit with the, the glue when we get to that stage. So that's that guy done. The head again, fantastic. It's on the the join, so you'll not see any f sort of flash. Heads are nice, there doesn't appear to be any real tidy up needed on the head. And the sword arm, again, good and sturdy actually, guys, which is great. It doesn't feel flimsy at all. And sometimes with the swords, they can be a little flimsy on certain kits and break quite easy, both when you're building and when you're playing. And then the saber tash. Again, guys, compared to if you have a look at our unbox on the Perry Hazars, which are fantastic models, the Sabre Tash is a little flimsy. Uh, this isn't. This appears to be a thicker cast. 
um, so not as likely to break or be damaged when you're building. So thumbs up on that one. Let's go clean up the saber tash there. And that's us ready guys, so quick clean up on the base too, because I paint the rims of my bases. So I don't want bits of uh, plastic sprue jutting out. Just be careful with your thumbs on this guys. Easy to lose one. And there we have it. So real, I mean real quick guys, from sprue to ready to assemble is lightning fast. Uh, and that takes us on then to hard laying. I just use standard polystyrene cement. This is a Citadel one. Yeah, make sure it's all clean and ready to go. And I'm going to join my horse first. As you see guys, these horses are quite large, they're quite clunky. Um, however, it's quite nice. Some kits, you find the join lines on the horses can leave big gaps. It actually doesn't on this, which is great. So, I mean, although they are a little bit cartoony, I suppose, in terms of their scale, um, they do go together really nicely. As you can see, there's not going to be much of a, a tidy up needed there with the glue. So that's our horse ready to, ready to go. Uh, and just while I'm assembling the rider, I'm going to actually get the horse on the base at the same time. So, two nice big, uh, nice big base mount points for me. Yeah, which means you can actually just set the model on and let it glue while you're working on the other bits. Uh, which I love. Okay, I'm just making sure that's on the base. Um, nice and even. And there we have it, so our horse is just going to dry while we move on to the rider. So the horse went together super fast guys, really easy to mount on the base. So body, first part, part for me will be the sword arm. Uh, and what you can do guys, because the horse is now on its base, you can dry fit the rider. Um, just to get the right pose. Um, I know some people like to have a real variety of poses with their, with their minis. Uh, so I'm going to have this guy sword. Riding in there, which is perfect. So we'll leave that as it is. We've then got the head. Again, a little touch of glue. And we're going to get the head in there. You see at the back, guys, you can come back with your plastic glue just to touch in that collar a little bit, tidy that up. And there we have our Scots Grey Rider, guys. As you can see, I, I mean, I think that the detail and all of these is fantastic. The fact that the, the carbine isn't a, a single piece that needs attached is also fantastic in terms of a speedy build. Yeah, so big fan of that. And then we have, last but not least, the mount for the saber tash. So it's actually incorporated part of the, the piping along the model's back, uh, which is obviously why that's a big sturdy strap there. Um, so I'm just going to pop the glue in here along that. Again, guys, there's no sort of guessing where this goes. It's um, actually molded to fit. Again, in terms of building things fast uh, and without much difficulty, great for... I mean, this would be a great starter kit, no doubt about it. Uh, for somebody that's maybe used to uh, more detailed build guides, you know, maybe coming across from Games Workshop or other manufacturers with real detailed builds. And there we have it guys, simple as that, that's your Scots Grey, ready to mount. You can at this point guys leave him loose, some people like to paint their miniatures off the horse, um, but I mean it's a good snug fit there anyway, regardless. So that's it guys, that is as simple as that. As you can see for me the scale of the horse, uh, if we have a look at it beside a Perry horse, You'll see it just seems a wee bit clunkier. Maybe not just as detailed, you know, in terms of the muscul musculature of the sculpt. But I mean, overall, guys, I think it's a fantastic looking miniature. And it's a Scots Grey, an iconic Scots Grey. And you've seen how quick it was to build there. So there we have it, guys. Simple as that. In terms of the box contents, guys, I think it's a fantastic, fantastic box in terms of the contents. You're getting 12 models. Um, including commands, 14 models all in, with all your horses, 
and enough bases for them, which is great. You're not having to go and outsource bases. Unless you particularly want them on singles. In which case you can pick the Warlord bases up from Warlord themselves. Uh, not too pricey. Sculpt quality, uh, I think the Rider is great. Uh, and, you know, having painted some of these guys, you mean the paint, they pick the paint up really well. Maybe not the most detailed of kits, but, I mean, definitely fully functional and looks great painted up. Not so impressed with the quality of the, the horse sculpt. Um, it's just, as I say, a little bit faded with details. Uh, and, you know, you have to do a little bit of extra work at the painting stage to bring them up nicely. Material itself is, as usual, I think, from Warlord, I think it's fantastic. It's soft enough to work easily but also sturdy enough that it doesn't break and it doesn't chip away easy you're not going to have any mishaps at the build stage uh, for, for flimsy parts as i say the carbine is already pre-attached it's a good solid join there everything's just nice and sturdy guys there's no sort of easily broken parts build options from the kit guys real great strength of both the union brigade kit and the household brigade kit from warlord is the fact that you can actually build all of the three regiments so we've got scots gray here can build it in a skilling which everybody have done some of and you can also put, uh, build your first regiment of dragoons so fantastic from that angle uh, build these second to none you know you, you'll do a regiment of these guys in, in half an hour if you sit down with your blade and cut them out you'll get uh, your full unit of 12 up and ready to go uh, overall look guys i would say perfectly functional um you know it's not going to be award-winning but i mean ranked up they look fantastic uh, especially if we're going to be building nine units of Union Brigade all together. It's going to look really impressive on the table. And then you can't really argue with the price. Uh, you know, £20 or £16 from some online retailers for 12 miniatures for a full unit is really hard to beat. Um, when you look at the equivalent uh, in metal, although the metals may be, you know, particularly fantastic sculpts, you, you if you're building something on this scale uh, and you want to build the whole brigade, for instance, this is the way to go because it is just so cost effective in terms of price. Uh, it's going to be hard to beat. And as I say, when they're ranked up, they look fantastic. Uh, so guys, overall rating, I would say these are a great kit for anyone undertaking a large scale project for black powder or great game sort of scale stuff or grand tactical scale stuff because of the, the price point and the fact that they're, you know, value for money. Um, also a great kit for beginners, so if someone will be getting into historical games, this could be the kit to get them. Yeah, because it's so easy to clip out, it's so easy to build, and you don't need to second guess where parts are going, which you will encounter with some kits. Uh, it, it's just really easy, there's, there's pre-molded lines there where you stick stuff on, and you can see really easy. So guys, overall I would say this is not a must buy, but it definitely is a good fit for Grand Tactical, large scale collections, or beginners. Um, and it's perfectly functional on the tabletop. So that's us guys, that is our Scots Grey. Uh, unboxed, built and reviewed. Hope you've enjoyed and we'll catch you again soon.